Hello everyone, it's me, Coffee Stitcher. Um, it is Sunday afternoon. It is the second Sunday of January, if you can believe that already. Um, so sorry I did not have my video up earlier. Um, I woke up this morning and found a fantastic table on Facebook Marketplace, but I had to get it before like noon. So I kind of hit the ground running to get that and then I wanted to get it in and set up and truth be told, I haven't really stitched all that much this week. I've done stuff, but I haven't really stitched per se. Um, so I, uh, I didn't have quite as much that I was gonna go over and there were some comments that I'd gotten that I really wanted to take a good amount of time and think about um, before I came to my response on a few of them. So, there we go. Um, first off, um, the, because there is so little for this video, there are a couple of things that I'm going to talk about. There are going to be some heavier topics. If you don't enjoy heavier topics, if, um, you just come to stitching because floss tube, because you want to hear me talk about my stitching and not about anything else, um, then I'm going to go ahead and do that at the end. Um, I do wish you would stay around, um, but of course I cannot force you to. So, um, that being said, let's dive into the Q&A and we've got some haul. Um, I'm not going to do a tour of the new room. We still don't really have it fully set up. Um, until I get a couple more things done. It looks okay, but it's not done yet, and I don't want to show it off until it's actually done. Um, so, first things first, we're going to go into the comments. Um, Stephanie Lefebvre um, asks, have I ever used pre-gridded fabric? Um, and the answer is no, I have not. Um, I've only gridded a few times, um, and that was back really when I first started stitching. So it's not something I do often at all. So I really don't have a, um, really don't know. Um, and I'm sorry, I wish I had a better answer than that. Um, Michelle, yes, you're always welcome to borrow my outfits. Um, I'm wearing a new shirt that I got for Christmas. It says, don't make me drop a house on you. And I'm going to stand up so you can see the bottom. So, G got it for me. Um, Cheryl by Ruger, I think some of it is, and I need to get another light in here, light source in here. Um, where I was sitting last week was directly under the overhead lighting. So I think it made me look more tired than I was because I really wasn't at all tired last weekend. That's kind of um, it, it looks like, for Q&A. Although, Sarah Green, yeah, I will tell you, you're entitled to your own opinion on that. Um, because I, I would strongly argue otherwise. Um, all right. So that's it for the Q&A. It wasn't really a lot this week. Um, I say that. There's two comments that I'll be addressing at the end. Um, so I got my um, nest threads from Thrill Threads, and this actually finished out, I think, the gas wool. So I now have a complete set of that floating around. This month had tomato and tea rose, red grape and terracotta, which I think there may be one more grouping. I think there's one more grouping because I feel like there are. I, I'm pretty sure I've seen verdigris and wool. Um, and then tarnished gold. And then my full chronics. 
Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got navy, nutmeg, optic opal, and the aptly named orange. So that was this month's Krynik. And then I got this month's Fabric of the Month from, uh, or December's, I guess I should say. Fabric of the Month from uh, Fortnite. This is the last, I believe, in the um, last year's neutrals, which were all mushroom theme. And this is Norica Black Truffle, which is a very interesting gray purple modeling. Um, it doesn't show quite as purpley on the camera as it does in person, um, but it, it's really pretty. So um, I am doing their opalescence for next year. So I'll be very excited to see what comes my way. Um, and for that, I went to an even weave, I believe. All right. Then my other little bit of haul, well, there's another little bit, but I'll show it to you in a second. Um, I got a vintage Bucilla Wizard of Oz needlepoint ornament kit that I will eventually tackle. Uh, I'm super excited to do that because I've never done needlepoint and yeah, so it's a fun, another one of those fun vintage Bucilla kits. Um, as it stands, I have the ones that are the felt ones that my mom did. Um, eventually I'd like to get an unopened one just because I'm weird like that. I'll have to get an unopened one of the needlepoint as well. Um, so I need the Lee Ward jeweled versions, um, which don't show up terribly often when they do. They're really, like, there's a scarecrow right now on eBay, but he's like 50 bucks, and I'm sorry, I'm not paying $50 for a little ornament kit this big. I'm just not doing that. Um, and then the Bucilla Cruel Wool, uh, which I am currently bidding on, so none of you, none of you bid against me, um, because that thing's hard to find. And then the baby, the stamped baby crib thing, blanket, sheet, whatever it is. Uh, and I'll have grabbed them all. All right, so let's dive right into what I worked on this week. So I think I was in a little bit of a finish hole after the week before, because I got a lot of finishes in December, y'all. Um, the Too Small from Stitching Book Club, the um, Yule Goat, um, the first of the Hige, um, patterns, I did a lot, um, you know, my towel out of the way, so it's not reflecting bright light up at me, um, so I got a lot done this last, so I didn't really accomplish much this week, now part of it also was I had to build the table on Monday, and I've been doing some unpacking in here, um, and I've fallen down the felt rabbit hole again so don't be surprised if you see some felt things incorporated into what i'm doing um because i found some really cute patterns that i'm really excited to try yes uh, so one of the things was oof, i got a bucella stocking kit it's this one it's upside down haha ha, look at that so it's this one um and i accomplished I got prepped for the next part, but I got the first three parts done. So the stocking is cut out, the first thing was sequined, and then the second thing was embroidered and sequined and then attached. So there we go. Um, my th general MO, I think, on this is going to be to kind of work on it when I'm too tired to stitch um, because it is so, so simple to do. So I got that. Um, then I was working on Corner of the World, but it was just an absolute, just like pull of teeth to get me to work on it. So I'm not sure if it's just because I was not in the mood when I pulled it out to work on it, or if it's the piece itself. So I did get a little done. Um, I got the tree and the bird and part of houses done. So um, I did at least start work in on that. So um, I'm gonna try and bring it back out later in the month, but it just was not calling to me. 
Um, as you know, one of my Whip Go, Whip Go Board goals was to work on um, three sow parts of a sow. Well, I, that led me to working on the Clouds Factory Zodiac. I didn't get as far as I'd wanted to. Friday, we, I didn't really stitch. Yesterday, I didn't really stitch. But I did at least get one circle and part of the next. So my goal, at least before the weekend's out, it, I won't finish my goal that I had for the Whip Go weekend, but is to at least get this round of frames done um, for the, the two parts that I wanted to accomplish this month. And then um, tomorrow and the next day, I should be able to fill them in fairly quickly. The filling in is actually a fairly simple part. It's the, the border itself that's the tricky part. So they're, they're very intricate. And it's 36 count, and I'm having to stitch each stitch individually because I used um, silk and not TNC. I probably still would have to stitch each stitch individually because of the way they're designed, but still, I feel like I go a little slower because it's silk. All right. Let's see there. Then my work project, as y'all know, was quilts. And I actually got a page finish, which is exciting. So that's page one of nine. So here it is in all its beautiful glory. Um, I'm using the vast majority of the called for colors. Um, the orange one, I think it's the orange one. No, it's not that one. It's another color. I don't know which one it is. There's another color in here. There's, there's a one that I switched because Ginger Snap from General Arts was out for so long, so I used just Rust instead. I think it might be that one there. Um, but they look basically identical. And then my Claret, which is this dark red that you see on the side of the house here and here, um, that one is uh, starting out with Claret, but they've changed the dye, the color on that drastically. So I've got a um, classic color works that I'll be filling in with. The thing I'm most tickled with is this weaving willow up here because that's actually, um, what are the two colors? Is it chives? It's corn husk and um, uniform blue. And it amazes me because the uniform blue is also the windows here. So here it picks up as this sort of dark, gra dark gray, but over here it reads as like a dark green. And I think that's just so cool. So, there you go. So, I worked on quilts. I'm ready to go on to the next page, um, which may mean that I'll take something else to work because um, I had a page finished, and that was kind of where I wanted to be at by the end of the month. Um, but we shall see, because I'm not really going to, when I dive in next time, I'm not going to be at a place where I can work on border, like I, which is something I would do at work. So, all right. Um, don't know what I'm going to be working on this week. I've got some stuff for Daily 30, but we're going to see. Yeah, we're going to see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. i got no idea. You know me. I just kind of roll with uh, things. Um, okay, so now we're going to get to the last two comments that I received that I had not responded to yet. And it's going to all kind of fold into one general overall topic. So if at this point you're not interested in hearing my opinions on our current political landscape as well as how to handle um, certain things, then go ahead, peace on out. Um, if you are going to stick around, there are two things I want to say first. Um, first, some of you may have noticed I've turned off my responses on Instagram stories. Um, if you really feel compelled, you can always message me. However, one of the things that I felt a little weird about is story responses with emojis. And I turned off the same comments on another post. When I say these things, when I do these things, it's not because I want to get feedback and praise for what I'm doing. Because ultimately my feeling is, is what I'm doing is being a decent human being. And we shouldn't praise each other for, I mean, uh, yes, I mean, obviously it's good to be a good person, but that should be our default. It shouldn't be that we decide 
to do these things for the praise. It should just be the default. It's not. And so if, if you're going to watch, um, if you have genuine questions, if you want a genuine dialogue and conversation, please, by all means, I do encourage that. Um, however, I don't necessarily need the... The responses. Just, yes. Um, I think that's what I'm trying to say. And, of course, if you don't agree with me, this is not the sort of thing that I really want to know if you disagree with me on. Um, because when it comes down to it, if you're not for the same ideals like this, it, it's not like being against pickles on a hamburger. We can disagree about that from here to eternity, and I'm not going to care. I think they're disgusting, but if you like them, I'm not going to yuck your yum. But what we're talking about is the very fabric and fiber of our country and us as human beings. And there's no room for an argument for the other side. Um, because what happened this week was completely reprehensible. And unfortunately, I know people have wanted to say, well, we're better than this. No, we're not. We are so not better than this. Can we be better? Yes. Do we need to be better? Oh, fuck yes. But are we better as we are now? No, we're not. And it's a real shame. What we saw was a coup. It was led by a person who was elected to public office. And while he may not have physically been there to welcome them in with open arms, everything he's done over the last four years was basically handing them an engraved invitation, buying their airline tickets, and saying, have at y'all, welcome to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. <sighs> I'm scared. Michelle said the same thing. I don't know if we'll survive this as a country. What I want to say, if those of you who stuck around who don't necessarily agree with my politics, if you stuck around, and I hope, I hope someone did, We can make all the jokes we want to about, oh, well, they're all upset because they couldn't get over the fact he lost, which is what they were telling us to do for the last four years, and all sorts of stuff. But at the end of the day, we went through four years of us saying, you know, well, we, this he's not who I chose. But we went through eight years of hearing the other side, for lack of a better term, calling Obama not our president. So we need to stop that. No, that does not mean we need to support the current president. In fact, if you don't particularly care for Biden, I, I don't expect you to, you know, go out and donate to his campaigns. But we need to get over this me, me, me aspect. And we've got to move on as a country. We've got to heal. So while I'm not sorry that, that he lost, and I'm not sorry that people are upset that he lost, because quite frankly, those people are probably not people worth knowing at the end of the day, because they support a white supremacist. Um, We've got to stop thinking in those terms. Or else, I mean, the united part of our name might as well just be a joke anyways, but that's just going to continue it. That being said, 
I was asked by by two individuals about um, one about Weeks Styleworks and one about um, a needlework store that had not updated the name of Zweigert's um, Confederate Gray to Mystic Gray. And there were good questions asked. And the question specifically regarding the um, regarding the, the particular needlework store, which I won't name. And what can we do to identify and support those, those shops, those places that don't support the violence like we saw on Wednesday or don't support the Republican Party or, you know, are very fo much for Black Lives Matter? How do we do that? And I talked to some friends because I, number one, I'm one of those people, I kind of have to talk things through. I can't just come up with a response, especially when it's something this important. I'm going to first go about saying lists and boycotts are a bad idea. At the end of the day, who you choose to do business with is up to you. That is, that's, at the end of the day, it comes down to you and where you want your money to go. Now, the fact of the matter is we're in a capitalist society. Money talks. Money is really, even in a lot of ways, more powerful of a way to vote than going down to the ballot box on, on election day. So, I said that way louder than I meant to. One thing I would recommend, especially with big corporations, you can usually find out where their donations went. That's a good way to indicate what they believe, even if they haven't made any sort of public statements. Um, and there are some that you're going to find lots of things about, Hobby Lobby being one of them. And I, I straight up, I will not shop at Hobby Lobby. Not anymore. Um, between how, after learning what I did about, about the company, it's very easy to Google. But beyond that, what they did at the start of this pandemic to their employees was atrocious. And that does not deserve my money. If you have an LNS, chances are most of you kind of get to know your shop owners. If you feel like your shop owner doesn't support the same things you do, there's always subtle ways of sort of figuring that out or even just point blank asking them. If they don't, then it's up to you to decide, is it more important to me to get this skein of general arts than it is to go somewhere else that supports the same things I support. I don't eat at Chick-fil-A. Um, it sucks because I do like their chicken, but I don't eat there. Um, I'm fortunate I know where my LNS stands on things. Um, so I, I don't have to worry about that. But I don't want people to make lists um, to start talking about active boycotting because at the end of the day, they're a small business and really small businesses should be what makes up America. If you want to personally choose not to shop there, that's totally fine. But be, it's a very s slippery slope from when it, when it comes to these things of going too far and taking it to the point that you've then alienated the people you're trying to convince otherwise. Um, it's a slope that I myself even started slipping downwards with, oops, sorry, I just knocked my table, um, with weak sty works. And I recognized that and that was wrong. So 
the best thing you can do, do your research, know where your money is going, and then make an educated decision from there. If someone says, hey, I'm going to go to XYZ shop and XYZ shop is all for the killing of small children, then you can say, hey, I don't go there because of this. That's the way to do it. That's the way to change and get things out there, but not a master <laughs> definitely does not need to be a master list. And that may not even be what the the um commenter was even meaning, but that was that was how it, I interpreted it. So if I misinterpreted that, I do apologize. But it it really boils down to your money and using your money where you feel it's best. In my case, um, I will not be using Leaks Dye Works any longer. Um, the lack of response is disappointing. Um, I will be looking for other alternatives. Uh, you can all easily guess why. Um, am I going to tell you to stop using it? No. Um, and there are projects I've got that I'm going to continue with because I'm far enough into them that to change now would be a bad idea. But going forward, that's where I stand. So, there we are. Um, I hope all of that made sense. Um, and I know I'm saying um a lot. It's because I'm trying to gather thoughts correctly. So I do apologize for that as well. We are in for an interesting year. Um, I'm not willing to, as funny as the I've experienced my seven-day trial of 2021 and I'd like to return it meme was. Um, we've got a lot of challenges ahead of us. A lot. And all I can say is that we have to do better. If you have friends, if you have family who aren't, who aren't responding the way, and I don't mean like freaking out or in hysterics, but if they're espousing the conspiracy theories, if they even for a remote moment think that what happened on Wednesday was a good thing, then try to educate. But it's also okay to turn them free and say, you know what, I can't support this issue and th this is the line in the sand for me. Um, But we've, we've got a hard road ahead of us, y'all. We need to listen. We need to put out as much good as we can. And like I've said a few times already, we have to be better. Otherwise, I don't know what's going to happen. That's pretty scary. Anyhow, um, that's it for me this week. I am about to go cook dinner and hopefully be more productive with my stitching this week. Um, and I will see you all next week. Have a good week, y'all.